Hey everyone, we saw how we can create classes using class keyword and we also saw how to create a constructor to initialize class properties. Let's create a new class in our main file, class laptop and define the class constructor for this laptop. Inside our laptop, we want to have a brand of the computer. We can also have configuration details for this computer like memory, CPU, graphics card and many other configurations. But for the sake of this simple example, let's keep it short and let's assign memory and CPU. We want to assign all the past arguments to the object of this class and we know how to do that, right? Set.brand equals brand self.memory equals memory and self.cpu equals cpu. Let's also write a simple print details method. This method simply prints all the attributes of a specific instance of our laptop class. Now we can initialize this computer using laptop. It's of brand HP. It has got 8 GB RAM and it has got i7 processor. Let's assign it to a variable HP laptop. Now I can call HP laptop .print details, and if I execute, we can see that it prints the details of this laptop configuration. Now let's think that in our application, we also want to store the details of the memory, like its memory size, manufacturer, and whether it's a SD or DDR4 RAM. In that case, we can provide those data in our laptop class constructor, but that's not a good practice. From system design perspective, every class should be independent entity. So it makes sense to create another class memory and inside the constructor init method, we can simply create memory of 8 gigs. This is a basic class construction. We have already seen this in the previous video in this Python series. Instead of passing this memory inside our laptop class constructor, we can pass an object of this memory class. For that, we have to first construct our memory object because we need to pass it in our laptop class constructor. Let's create memory 8GB equals memory. While constructing our laptop, we need memory. So let's modify this HP laptop construction by passing in this memory object we created here. Now inside our print details method, we cannot access self.memory directly. If we try executing it, it prints the object's memory location. To access the size attribute of the memory object, we have to use dot notation, self.memory.size. If I execute, it prints the correct computer configuration. The problem with this design is that we can still use this 8 gig memory in different computer. So if I create another Dell laptop with a brand Dell, and if I pass this same memory object in here with i5 processor, now if I call print details on this Dell laptop, we can see that it prints 8 GB. But to verify if it's the same object, let's see its memory location using id function. Print id of this HP laptop's memory. And similarly, let's print id of Dell laptop's memory. And if I run this, it prints the same memory address. So it's using the same memory object to construct two laptops, which is not correct. If I modify memory of one of the laptop, then it modifies the memory of the second laptop. 
Let's try and see. Let's modify this HP laptop's memory size to 4 gigs. You can see that both laptops memory size have been modified to 4 gigs. To avoid this, we need a mechanism to access this memory only through a specific instance of the laptop class. That's exactly what we can achieve using inner classes. Inner classes or nested classes help us arrange code in a meaningful way. Here laptop memory may belong to only laptops. They cannot be used for any other purpose because they are designed with specific slots. So it should be attached to a laptop. Second thing, it hides the code for memory class inside the laptop class. So they are hidden from the outside world. So let's move our memory class inside the laptop class. Now we cannot create memory object directly like this because the memory class is hidden inside the laptop class. To create new instance of the memory class, we can call it like we call all the member variables. Inside the laptop class init method, let's call self.memory. This will call the constructor of the memory inner class. It doesn't take any argument, so we are fine here. Let's remove this memory argument from the laptop class constructor as we no longer need it from outside. While constructing the laptop, it automatically assigns 8 GB RAM to our computer. As we know, object level attributes are different for each object. So it will create a separate memory object for each laptop instance we create. Now that means we can remove this 8 gig variable and argument from our HP laptop and our Dell laptop. We are still modifying our HP laptop's memory in this assignment. So let's see if it changes our Dell laptop configuration as well. If I execute this, we can see that it didn't modify Dell laptop. It only changed HP laptop's memory to 4 gigs. Similarly, we can nest classes to multiple levels. For example, our computer may have motherboard class and that motherboard class may have CPU class defined inside it. So our CPU class will be inner class to our motherboard and motherboard will be inner class of the computer class. So that's how you can use inner classes and implement a coherent system design. In this video, we spoke about how we can arrange our classes in a meaningful way using inner classes. We also saw how we can access members of inner classes using dot notation. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please write it in the comment section below. I do check all the comments in here. In the next video, let's explore object-oriented paradigm a little further. I'll see you in the next video.